Hello, in this lecture we're going to take a look at an accounts payable subsidiary ledger. We will be able to define an accounts payable subsidiary ledger, explain the purpose for the use of an accounts payable subsidiary ledger, record transactions to an accounts payable subsidiary ledger, and explain the relationship between the accounts payable subsidiary ledger, the general ledger, and the trial balance. So we're going to look at this in context of a problem. We're going to work through some problems and use this worksheet to see the effect in multiple areas. Always a good idea, in my opinion, to have a trial balance open whenever working through as many problems as possible. It gives you a good cheat sheet or, you know, an, an overview of what we're taking a look at and puts it in context of other accounts. So here we can see that the assets are in green, the liabilities are in orange, the equities in the light blue, and the darker blue are the income statements. Uh, we're going to have the trial balance, a beginning balance. We're going to record a quick transaction so we can see what happens in relation to other accounts. As we go through this, we will, of course, be focusing on the accounts payable account in uh, this particular problem. You'll note that the uh, asset account or the debit balance accounts are going to be represented without brackets or positive numbers. The credit balance accounts will have uh, brackets or negative numbers for Excel. The reason for that, it can give us a, a little more room and cut down on the columns to show us the balancing, meaning that the debits minus the credits will equal zero. That's what the zero represents down here. And it'll also give us a quick way to calculate net income being the revenue of a credit minus the expenses of debits, giving us revenue of 309 in this case, or net income of 309. So it's an easy way to calculate net income, which is revenue of a credit minus expenses. So note that that's going to be not a loss, but net income represented by brackets because the credits are beating the debits on the income statement. We also have our accounting equation up here, assets equal liabilities plus equity. We are in balance, we can see in this format as well. And we're going to be focusing on uh, the accounts payable. And whenever we look at the backup for accounts payable, we usually think of the general ledger. So the general ledger is what we've traditionally looked at and said, well, if we want to know more detail about account, let's take a look at the general ledger. Now, the general ledger will give us detail by date. We're going to show the general ledger just for this one account, being accounts payable, the account we are focusing on. There will, of course, be a similar general, general ledger account for each account on the trial balance. We are then going to look at the subsidiary ledger, which, of course, is the new thing that we're going to take a look at and determine why we would need a, a general ledger. Uh, what does it do on top of or over and above what is done by the general ledger and therefore what makes it necessary? The subsidiary ledger is not going to be for every type of account. Uh, many types of accounts that we will go through, you know, one by one, will kind of determine what added things we will need for those accounts to make them more effective than just the general ledger. And this one, we need to back it up by the subsidiary ledger, which will be in order by, we call them vendors in this case. Usually they're called vendors. So if we take a look at the first transaction, purchase supplies on account from Office Depot. We can do what we've done in the past. Our normal transaction would be what accounts are going to be debited and credited. Uh, first question I usually ask, is cash affected? In this case, no, we didn't pay cash. We bought it on account, kind of like a credit card. Therefore, the account that will be affected is accounts payable. However, accounts payable, it might be more difficult to know whether we debit or credit accounts payable because we might deal with it less than some other accounts. Sometimes it's easier to think about what we have received in this case. In this case, we received supplies. So we, if we look through our chart of accounts, we see supplies up here in the assets section. There will often be a supplies account in the expense section as well. In this case, we're going to record it as an asset. Reason being is that we're going to assume that uh, the supplies are significant so, and we're going to treat them similar to the way we would treat inventory in that we're going to buy the supplies, put them on as an asset, but then count the supplies at the end of the time period and expense the amount that we have used. So the accrual concept here being that when we buy the supplies, we haven't yet used the supplies, therefore they should be an asset used for the future. When we do use the supplies, we should then expense them as they are used. So we can see that supplies has a debit balance. We're going to make the supplies go up, so we're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. And what will the credit then be to? Well, it's not going to be to cash. We didn't pay cash. It's going to be to accounts payable as we determine that's the other account. Accounts payable has a credit balance represented by, you can see this payable here, or this liability has a credit. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. If we look at that transaction, that's one we've seen before. It's going to be accounts uh, supplies goes up with a debit. Accounts payable goes up with a credit. 
If we look at that in relationship to the trial balance, then we can see that here's our supplies account it has a debit represented by the fact that it does not have brackets around it. And we took that and debited it to make it go up. So we did the same thing to it, which increases it from the 3975 to the 4655. Then the other side being the accounts payable goes from zero up in the credit direction because it's a credit balance account. We did the same thing to it, making it go up to 680. If we want to see the backup of that 680, the questions that we're going to ask in terms of accounts payable are that, uh, do we owe anybody money? And we can look at the trial balance and say, yeah, people, we owe people uh, 680. And uh, then the question is, well, who do we owe? Well, generally, when we look at the backup for types of accounts, we can always look at the general ledger and say, hmm, here's the general ledger where we also posted that 680. Uh, and that tells us what happened by date, but it doesn't tell us who we owe. That's why we need the accounts payable subsidiary ledger. I need to write the check to somebody. Therefore, we need to know who we owe, how much we owe them, when we, we need to pay them. And in this case, we owe Office Depot. So that accounts payable will also be recorded here. So notice what we are doing. Where we can record that, uh, that accounts payable will be reflected on the trial balance. It will be reflected on the general ledger account for accounts payable. And it will be reflected on the general and the uh, accounts payable subsidiary ledger which is an order by vendor. So remember that most textbooks, a lot of textbooks, we'll call them vendors being like kind of like people we buy from. If you go to a street vendor, it's a vendor. So those are the people we buy stuff from and often owe money to. Oftentimes it's going to deal with inventory. Uh, I'm not going to deal with inventory here. It's just another level of complication. I'm just going to uh, represent the general fact that uh, if we have an accounts payable, that means we owe somebody. We need to know who we owe. Therefore, we will back it up by uh, the subsidiary ledger. All right. So then if we paid Office Depot for the purchase of office supplies in the past on account, so now we're going to pay, you know, Office Depot. So we are, um, now of course paying off the debt that we incurred in the past. And therefore the questions that we would ask is, is cash affected? Yeah. We're going to write a check. Therefore cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go down. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. We're going to credit cash. What are we going to debit? Well, what did we get? We got supplies, but yeah, we got that in the past. We're really paying off the debt that we owe, which of course is the accounts payable. So here's the accounts payable. We can see in the subsidiary ledger that we owe off the depot, that 680. That's probably the check that we will write. So let's take a look at that trend. So this is what the journal entry would look like. We've got the accounts payable going down with a debit and cash going down with a credit. If we were to see that in context of a trial balance and uh, the quick trial balance down here, we can see that cash has a debit balance. We credited it to make it go down because we wrote a check for, for cash to make it go down. So it went from here down to uh, 567, 567, 320. And then the payable account, we owed 680 credit represented by the brackets. We did the opposite thing to it. We are debiting it, making it go down to zero. So if we were then to ask our questions, do we owe anybody money? And we can look at the trial balance and say, yeah, no, according to the trial balance, we don't owe anybody any money. And we could ask, well, I thought we owed people money recently. Uh, what happened? Have we recently paid people off? Well, if we look at the general ledger, the normal backup, we can say, well, I can see that we uh, owed someone money. We, we uh, have a bill that we got billed for something for 680 and then we paid it off. But if we want to know who that happened with, then we would have to look at the accounts payable subsidiary ledger, which is an order by vendor. In this case, we have the depot, Office Depot here. We uh, were billed from Office Depot. We obviously must have purchased something at this time. And then we paid it off here. So that's why we are now back down to zero. We can see that the general ledger ties out to the subsidiary ledger, ties out to the trial balance, which should be the case at all times. So we should see some patterns here, of course, uh, when we think about the payable accounts. And so here we have the next transaction. Received auto service on account to be paid in the future from A Auto. So we did a transaction with our auto service. So we're going to say then that uh, if we got maintenance on the car and whatnot, and we got it on account, is cash affected? No. The whole point here is that we're working on account. We kind of put it like kind of like on our credit card, which is the account payable account. Now, again, because it's a liability and liabilities have credit balances, it might be easier to think about what we received when we're trying to decide if we should debit or credit the account. In this case, we received auto service of some kind. So that that is going to be probably down here in some kind of expense. Auto expense in this case is what we have. We could have named that some other kind of expense, but 
uh, something within auto is probably it repairs or it's going to be uh, just auto expense. It just depends how how detailed we want our expenses to be grouped. But uh, that's where it's going to go. And we know that expenses all have debit balances and they only go one way. They go up. Therefore, uh, if it's a, a expense account that is affected, we're going to debit the expense account, increasing it. And if we debit the expense, that means we must be crediting the liability. Well, that kind of makes that does make sense because liabilities have credit balances. And if we want to make it go up because the bat we owe more money, then we have to do the same thing, which in this case is a credit. Uh, if we look at that, then the journal entry would be debit to the auto expense, credit to accounts payable. If we see that transaction in terms of the trial balance then we would see that accounts payable is going from zero it's going up to the 320 in the credit direction brackets representing credits is going up in the credit direction the auto expense then is going from the 600 up with a debit because expenses always go up in the debit direction to the 920. note the effect on the net income here as well the net income is affected by the expense so the expense is going up bringing net income down. So net income was income, not a loss, of 309 represented by the revenue less the expenses. The expenses went up, therefore revenue minus expenses, net income went down. Now, uh, the questions we're going to ask in terms of accounts payable is going to be, well, you know, if, we're the, if we own the company, who do we owe anybody money? And we're going to say, yeah, we owe somebody at 320 according to the trial balance. Well, who do we owe? And when do we need to pay them? Well, we could look at the backup on the general ledger over here, and the general ledger says, well, I don't know, we billed, you know, we got billed 680, and we owed someone, and then we paid someone 680, and then we got billed another 320. That's that three, this is the 320 there. Uh, but it doesn't tell us who we owe. If we want to know who we owe, we need to know, we need to go to the subsidiary ledger. And if we look at the subsidiary ledger, we can see that that 320 is also being posted to a auto so now that's what's going to tell us who owes us the money the subsidiary ledger is going to break out the same information as the general ledger however it's going to break it out in terms of vendor vendor being the term we use for uh who we owe money to oftentimes in a merchandising company it's going to be the people that we buy our inventory from so that's going to be that transaction there we note that the general ledger ties out to the subsidiary ledger ties out to the trial balance should always be the case so now we have business meal at Outback uh, account to on account to be paid in the future. So now we had a business meal and we went to Outback. So uh, we're going to say that then is cash affected. And we're going to say, no, we bought it basically kind of on a credit card on account. Therefore, the account that will be affected will be accounts payable. So again, we might want to think about what we received, however, in order to think about should we a debit or credit accounts re receivable or accounts payable. I'm sorry, we... <laughs> affected accounts payable the amount we owe to somebody and we might want to think well um, let's think about what we received first we received uh, a meal in this case or business meals it might have been a um, an event of some kind uh, and we're generally going to put that into an expense that expense might be called uh, entertainment expense meals and entertainment possibly down here we could again we could call it different types of things for different companies it's up to the bookkeeping department uh, the accounting department to decide how to group the expenses, what to name the expenses, and how and how many expenses they want, how detailed they they want the expenses. And so, in this case, we're going to put it into meals and entertainment. And meals and entertainment has a debit balance. Their expenses, all expenses have debit balances. They only go up. Therefore, we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. If we debit the expense account, we're going to have to credit the other account. That other account being the payable. The payable account has a credit balance. If we credit it again, we're doing the same thing to it, making it go up. This makes sense because um, we owe more money. Now, we owe more money to people or companies. All right, so here's what the journal entry looks like. We're going to debit the uh, entertainment expense. We always debit expenses, and we're going to credit the a payable account. If we look at that in terms of context of the trial balance and other accounts, then we can see the payable account is going to go from 320 up by the 640 that we now owe that's this 640 to the 960 so we did the same thing to it making it go up we owe more money on the expense side we see the entertainment expense went up from 15 here's the debit up here that's being posted down here to 15 6 therefore the expense went up if we look at the net income effect then we see that net income went from 308 680 income not a loss brackets mean credit 
uh, and it went down to 308.40. Why? Because expenses went up, bringing net income down, house net income calculated, revenue less expenses. So then our, our normal questions again, you know, if some if the you know the boss comes and asks, do we owe anybody money? And we're gonna say, yeah, according to the trial balance, we owe people six hundred and ninety dollars. Who do we owe and when do we have to pay them? Well, we could look at our backup that we usually look at for all accounts, the general ledger account, and say, well, I don't know, according to this, we owed people money, uh, we got billed for six eighty, then we paid the six eighty, and then we got billed for three twenty by someone, bringing the balance back up to three twenty, and then we got billed by six forty bring the balance up to uh, the 960 that we're currently showing. Okay, that's great, but who who do we owe if I have to write a check to the people? Well, uh, if we looked at the subsidiary ledger, we have that same information broken out by vendor, which now says that we owe Outback Steakhouse this 640, and we owe the auto, A auto uh, 320, therefore that adds up to the 960. So that's who we owe, and we can now see that the general ledger ties out to the subsidiary ledger for accounts payable as well as that ties out to the trial balance. All right, so then we're going to pay we paid Outback Steakhouse for purchase of business meals in the past. So now we're paying Outback, all right? And we can see that of course that we owe them the 640 over here. And so then the question is, well, is cash affected? Yeah, we're paying it with cash, a check, but that's going to be that's like cash for us. And cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. What are we going to um, debit then? Uh, we did get meals and entertainment, but we got that in the past. We already recorded that. What we're doing now is reducing the amount we owe, which is the payable account. So we have the 960 in the payable account. We need to make it go down. How are we going to make it go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. So uh, that's where we're going to reduce the payable account with the debit. That journal entry would look like this we're going to debit accounts payable reducing it we're going to credit cash reducing it if we look at that in terms of a trial balance then we would say cash is a debit balance we credited it and therefore it goes down because we did the opposite thing to it accounts payable down here is a credit balance account at the beginning of this transaction and we did the opposite thing by debiting it bringing it down to the 320 so we owed 960 brought it down to 320 any effect on net income no, no effect on net income, even though cash is affected because under the matching uh, concept of an accrual concept, we recognize the expense when it was incurred, not when it was paid. We ate the meal last time or we had the party or whatever we did last time, and uh, therefore that's when we incurred it, and now we're paying it. We're, we're also going to need, if we look through our questions then, we're, our, here's our questions. Do we owe anybody uh, money and still? Because I thought we paid bills recently, uh, and we would say, "Well, yeah, we still owe somebody the 320 according to our trial balance." Well, who do we owe? Well, I don't know. We could look at our general ledger over here, and we'd say, "Well, we billed, we got billed 680, bring the balance up to 680, and then we paid off 680, bring it back down to zero. Then we billed, we got billed 320, so so now we owe 320. Then we got billed the 640, bring it to nine, and then we paid 640, bring it back down to 320." Uh, but we still owe someone 320. Well, who do we owe? Then you got to look at the subsidiary ledger, and we're going to say that uh, we we paid off Office Depot, but we still owe the A Auto down here. We haven't paid the A Auto, so that's that's who we're going to have to write the check to. And uh, so then the you know the, the boss might say, well, then someone call A Auto and tell them tell them what happened over there. You know. The company dog had puppies, and the puppies ate the checks that were in the out box, and that's why the check hasn't... No, we would call A Auto <laughs> and tell them that um, uh, we do recognize that we still owe them money, and we do plan on paying them sometime in uh, the future, and it is on in our records and recognized at this point. And so uh, we are now able to define accounts payable subsidiary ledger, explain the purpose for the use of accounts payable subsidiary ledger, record transactions to an accounts payable subsidiary ledger and explain the relationship between the accounts payable subsidiary ledger the general ledger and the trial balance